And hello Geek, so welcome to our first title which is on programming in general. It's really the core foundation of everything we're going to be teaching. So before we dig too deeply and I want, I want to talk to you also about our process. Our earlier videos are slower and deliberately we do it this way to make sure that whoever's starting, no matter where, what level you're in, it's easy to join in. As the videos progress, the material becomes harder and harder as the hours go by because these developer titles, this title is actually, in, in essence, is 12 hours. Oh, and I just shaked my mic. Well, with that said, so don't worry if it feels like it's too slow because it's gonna the pace gets faster and faster. One of the best ways of making sure that you know what's going on is checking our exams and our, our tests to make sure that you know what you're doing, and that way you might be able even to skip some of the videos. Um, with that said... Without further ado, let's jump right in. And our first topic, which is before we even could touch and start touching things, we have to talk about a couple of videos, a couple of topics. Now, I'm sure that you're working with a computer for a while, and if you're not, then I hope you go and grab a computer and even read a basic book on working in any environment because we're not going to dig into how do computers work or dig into how to work with your specific environment that you're working in. Our main working environment is going to be... Um, Mac, but it doesn't really matter. We work both on Mac, on Windows, Windows 8, and or Mac, and it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your environment is as long as you know how to work within it. We, in, in, contrary to a lot of other tutorial videos that go too much into depth into the difference, the minute ver differences between versions of operating systems, we feel like, and I feel like, if you're working in a specific operating system, you know the basics of how to work with it, especially if you're a professional or an inspiring professional in the technology industry. So we're not going to dig too deep into specific technologies, um, it, operating systems, and focus more exclusively on Flash and programming and how to become a better programmer and how to become a visual programming programmer using Flash. Now, that was my intro to the intro of the intro, and it's time for us now to talk about one of the most important concepts you need to know before you can even work with any programming language or any program, really, but programming even more so. One of the most important things that you need to know is that there are a few different types of programming languages, and deliberately, I'm going to drop off all the history. I'm not going to talk about all the stuff that don't matter, and we're only going to focus on the most critical thing. Some programming languages compile while others don't. Now, what is compiling and what is the process of compiling is actually really important to understand. Flash is a compiled language, and you really have to know that you really need to understand that I've met a lot of uh, beginner programmers that don't get that difference, and, and it, it creates problems throughout their career, but at some point they figure it out, right? What is a, a compiled program? Now, the, the really, really fast-paced history of programming in general is that Programs are historically were developed for a specific computer. Just we were talking about earlier that we have Windows 8 and we have Mac and we have all these different type of operating systems. We also had different types of computers. Now, back in the old days, if you were around and you're using DOS or even before using DOS, every computer had a program that was associated directly to that computer and it only worked on that computer. Then Microsoft came into the picture or, you know, I might be, the history might be 100% right, and they created DOS. And when DOS was created, well, it opened up the door. What DOS was was a really low-level operating system that enabled programmers to create programs that would work for DOS. So basically, instead of creating applications that would need to know how to talk to a specific computer, now they only had to talk to a specific operating system. And the history of the Internet well, the history of computers in general evolved until the days of the internet. And just before those days of the internet, when they were grouping up of different operating systems that were becoming really popular, the Windows operating systems, the um, Mac operating systems, the Linux, and so on and so forth, there was a need uh, growing in the industries to try to figure out a way, how could a program be created only once and be useful and workable both on a Mac and a PC? And in those days of the early web, that's when Java became really popular. And one of the main reasons Java became so popular was because Java took the job away from the operating system that until Java really acted as the only translator that would translate whatever code we had down to the computer language. It created a mediator, someone that stood between the operating system 
and the programmer and made sure that the program that we created would be able to be understood in whatever operating system that was running. That was called using a virtual environment. Now, this Java virtual environment that was, if it was installed on every Mac, it's installed, and if it was installed also on that Windows, the same program could work on all these different applications. Now, for the program to really work efficiently, us as human beings, we write as human beings. Computers don't understand things in the same way. Computers really understand 0, 1, 0, 1, as you probably know, and if you don't, well, computers are really, really basic. They don't understand uh, detailed commands. The only commands they understand is really 0, 1. Now, the mediator languages, which that was the job of the operating system. The operating system took whatever code we had, converted it into 0, 1, 0, 1, and there you go, and you had an application. Now, to make the job easier on the operating system, there were files that were compiled, such as exe files or projector files. Those files enabled the operating system to slow down, basically not needing to re-understand human language each time, but to only understand the programming, well, the language that was already close to natural to the operating system, making it easier for it to translate it down into machine language. And in the same concept also were these virtual languages, such as Java, the virtual machine languages, that enabled us to basically compile our application, not to the operating system level, but to compile it into a, a intermediate language that is not human readable anymore because it's been through some sort of a process which then that virtual machine would then translate it down to whoever is going to be the viewer of it. And Flash is one of those languages. Now, there are other languages as well, which we're not going to dig into these titles because our focus right now is on programming languages that get compiled. Although Flash, which its language behind the scenes is ActionScript, has a very, very similar language to JavaScript. And the languages are very, very similar, but the biggest difference between JavaScript and ActionScript is that ActionScript is a compiled language. One of the most powerful features of having a compiled language is a very, very stable environment. If you have a Flash player on a Mac, a Flash player on a PC, and even a Flash player on your mobile device, you should expect to get more or less, or 99.9%, .9 the same behavior. Now, if you don't, then it's a bug on the Flash player itself, which would then be fixed by Adobe itself. But on your end, you don't have to worry as a developer, for the most part, between differences between different operating systems, because you create for the Flash player, and the Flash player's responsibility is to make sure that it works throughout the different experiences. And that's one of the biggest powers of working with a language such as Flash. Now, with that said, JavaScript really is a language that doesn't work that way. It's a language that depends directly on the browser. And these days, we're not working directly with the operating system, but the browser. And as such, depending on the browser that you're working with and the version of the browser, you could expect different results from your JavaScript. That's not true with ActionScript and compiled languages because compiled languages are much easier to control their quality. With that said, that's the intro that we had to give about the differences between compiled languages and uncompiled languages. Now, our next video and our next title is going to go into the specifics of the different file types because it's really important for you to know what file types are the source files, which we call the programming files that are behind the scenes, and which files are the deploy files, the compiled files, the ones you want to upload on the web or send to the client or whatever you want to do with those files that are supposed to talk directly with the browser and talk directly with the Flash player. So I hope to see you in our next video when, where we explore this topic.